Ignition Dash is one of the most complex drivers Beyblade has to offer. Its ability to reverse movement during battle seemingly goes against the laws of physics, making it very unique and fun to use. So me, being the innovator that I am, I decided to try to create the first working LEGO Ignition Dash. This is my journey, spanning over multiple months, and the failure of LEGO Ignition Dash. The first thing I thought about when trying to make this driver was to get my own motor and somehow use that to reverse the spin during battle. But this idea was soon shattered when I realized just how large even small engines can be. Pre-made motors such as LEGO, Kinex, and even Snap Circuit were too big even for the large size of ignition. And on top of that, if there were one small enough, I would have to figure out how to activate it during the battle. Meaning I can't just tape the on-off switch to permanently on. On the other hand, smaller motors are a lot harder to work with, and I would need to design a lot of the driver's parts myself. I'm pretty interested in LEGO Beyblades, but not enough to become a software engineer to design this driver. So, I had to get a bit more creative. If I couldn't use motors, I would have to reverse the driver's spin without adding any extra energy to the system. The most plausible way to reverse spin was through Technic pieces. For example, in a launcher, when you have two gears spinning adjacent to each other, they will spin in opposite directions. So if you connected one to the layer and one to the driver, the gimmick wouldn't activate mid-battle. But for now, I'm happy with simply reversing the driver's spin at all. But as you can see, we run into a clear problem with this design. If the bottom axle must be at the center of the bay, there's no way for the top axle to be in the center as well. And yeah, this isn't gonna work. So I looked online for some inspiration. Well, it turns out that googling two objects spinning different directions, same center, wasn't really helpful to me. But nevertheless, I did find some useful information. Although reverse spin doesn't occur very frequently, one such example of it was with coaxial contra-rotating helicopter blades. Just like I want for the ignition driver, one blade spins clockwise and the other spins counterclockwise, and they both have the same center. The new design would look like this, with a gear on the top, one on the side, and one on the bottom, such that the top and bottom ones would remain on the same axis, but still spin different ways. However, when I tried making a build specifically for this out of Legos, it was extremely difficult to keep it in a compact place and have it strong enough so that it wouldn't break during battle. It seemed like all hope was lost, but then I found this piece. The gear differential is a piece which only a handful of people would know. Its main usage is to be used as a mechanism to steer vehicles by applying more torque to one wheel than the other. But miraculously, this three gear setup is the exact one I needed for the ignition driver. And by sheer luck, I found it online and bought it with the rest of my Legos. A couple weeks later, I got the part and started to test it out. Here's one of my first trials. Did you see that? Did you see that? It moved counterclockwise like a whole millimeter. Well, as you can see, the idea worked somewhat, but not to the extent that I thought it would. So why did the gimmick largely fail? Let's think about this from a logical perspective. In order for the driver to turn counterclockwise, the layer must move clockwise relative to the driver. Now, if we imagine this in the stadium, that means the layer of the bay will be spinning, but the driver will be completely still. You also have to factor in where the weight is in the bay, since that's where the greatest resistance to motion lies. If you put the weight on the layer, then either the driver will be really flimsy or will just move the same direction as the layer. But if you put most of the weight on the driver as you would expect, then there's a huge fundamental problem. As the connection between the layer and the driver is free spin, that means that you just can't launch the bay off of the launcher. When you pull the ripcord, most of the energy is going into the ignition driver instead of the layer. And what you get at best is a launch no more powerful than a handspin. So, that's it. Even though I have another idea about how to get around the problems, I just realized that making a working LEGO Ignition Dash isn't logistically plausible. But hey, if you have any ideas or comments about this video, do help me and I'd be happy to respond with my thoughts. LEGO Bays!